Well, the Octagon Hall is known for its age. It's a very unique structure, an eight-sided structure, uh, antebellum, built prior to the Civil War, finished about 1859. Because of its importance during the war as a lookout, uh, used as a hospital by Mr. Caldwell, a Confederate sympathizer, we have picked up an extreme amount of paranormal activity in the house. Everything from apparitions, which I will mention a few. We've uh, had one that uh, appeared at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, which appears to be a soldier uh, in the driveway. Uh, we have a image of a little girl caught on a photograph from the upstairs window out in the front yard. Everything around her is in perfect focus, except her body, and it's very translucent. We have an apparition that we captured in the basement. We uh, were with a team that went into the basement at uh, 2 in the morning, and the cameras all started fuzzing up, and we, what appears to be a decomposing corpse laying on the, the ground at the bottom of the steps. We've also picked up the apparitions of a soldier walking across our leaning against a tree, rather, in the backyard uh, beside the uh, summer kitchen. The Octagon Hall is known for its EVPs. Uh, each team, and we've had over 150 investigative teams here, have picked up at least one, many, multiple dozens of EVPs. Some that are really very clear, uh, we have a young girl, which we think is Mary Elizabeth, the resident young lady that died in the fire in the basement, saying, Mommy, she's also asking, will you play with me? She also has said, I see you. And we, we think it's her that we catch very, very often just singing along when you come into the house in the mornings going la 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 or humming we often pick up whistles and again there's just so many many different things that have happened in the house and continue to happen to this day the house as i said not only uh, is a mecca for uh, paranormal activity but the yard the farm the barns all the outbuildings are period structures that were here. And we actually have a train bell that came from where the Confederates derailed a train on the back of the property in 1864. So all of these objects that are here are drawing, we think, this paranormal energy and holding it that we can pick up later at a different time. The back of the property, uh, the Caldwell Farm actually fronted the uh, L&N Railroad uh, that was finished also at the same time the house was in 1859 and used extensively by the uh, Union forces more than the Confederate. And this area was predominantly guerrilla activity. The uh, guerrillas attacked the train in 1864, they uh, derailed the train, burned it, and we think that the Caldwells actually took the bell off the locomotive and brought it up to the house and put it on a post and made a dinner bell out of it. We picked up a lot of varied activity on the property because the, ho the house and the grounds were used as a campground when the Confederates evacuated Bowling Green, which is about 10 miles north of us, early in the war, it was in February of 1862. They camped on the grounds for a couple of days and evacuated, which eventually led into Shiloh. But the biggest problem was that directly behind them was the Union forces, and they stayed for two or three days. Uh, they didn't treat the Caldwells with, uh, with great love. They, according to records, burned some of the buildings outside. They killed their cattle for food. And as just a pure act of meanness, 
killed the milk cow and threw it into the well, thereby contaminating the water so that they actually had to go to the creek to get water for a month. We also have a slave sanitary, uh, which is a circle of bald cypress trees. Uh, the Caldwells were slave owners. They had 25 slaves at the end of the war between the states. And they considered their slaves as part of the family, and they were willing to build a circular tree burial site uh, cemetery. We, we know that there are 17 graves there. Uh, the, the, they're only marked with field stones. And outside of that circle of trees are two Confederate soldiers that died in the house during the war. We know of one that made it to the house and was hiding from the Union Army. They hid him in the attic, and as the Union soldiers searched for him, apparently he took his boot off and was wounded in the leg and released the pressure on the artery, and he bled to death when they went up to get him. He'd already passed away. Another Confederate soldier was found early one morning about daylight on the front steps, and we think that he made it to the house. We don't know if he was unable or too weak to knock on the door, or if he did, the family didn't hear him. But when they got up the next morning, he was deceased, and he's also buried at the outside of the slave cemetery. They're, they're both marked with unknown soldiers' uh, gravestones. Well, again, I can't believe that I'm sitting here in this house at 9 o'clock at night because I hate this place and I've been terrified of it for a long, long time. I've never really known for sure what to believe, uh, whether I want to believe that it's real or uh, just figments of people's imagination. But there's been too many instances and, and too many uh, things happen that make me realize that I have to believe it. Um, I finally came in one evening when my husband was here and uh, while we were in the house and it was quiet, I felt something behind me flipping my hair. And at first I just moved it myself a few times thinking it was air, but then it was very obvious that someone was playing with my hair and there was no one behind me. And that's happened several times. Um, recently, I did hear the singing. I was singing as we walked through the house and then when I stopped singing, I could hear uh, the sound, the faint sound of someone singing or humming and it was coming from the upstairs. I walked over to the staircase and it stopped. And then as I walked back away from the staircase, it began again and it sounded like a little girl uh, humming or, or uh, singing very, very low. And then I could hear her a little bit more prominently. And my husband heard it too. And he had told me that they hear her singing a lot, Mary Elizabeth. And so that was my first, uh, I guess, witness of that. Being the uh, director of, of the property, uh, when I come in in the mornings, of course, we have an alarm system on the property. Uh, this, these things happen very, very occasionally. We uh, have the uh, alarm. Uh, once it's deactivated, we've picked up footsteps walking around on the floors upstairs. We've actually heard doors open and close. Uh, singing, the little girl loves to do her little singing and humming. And footsteps, the, uh, the entire house sometimes, uh, and, and it's not every day, but it does come alive. And uh, one of the, probably the scariest thing that has happened to me, and this is gonna take some time, so I'll. <laughs> but it, but, cut it down. Yeah, but it's, yeah, but it's a great story. Okay. Uh, we received a photograph of the little girl, Mary Elizabeth's mother. It was found in a trunk in Logan County, Kentucky with her name on the back of it. 
didn't had no clue that it even existed. Uh, the individual sent it to us, and we were thrilled, of course. And it was just a small tin type, and we took it and had it blown up to a 16 by 20, put it into a antique frame. Uh, on a Wednesday morning, no one was around. I was here alone. Took it upstairs and hung it on the wall in the bedroom. And as I started down the steps, I heard a young girl's voice just basically say, Mommy, just like she recognized the photograph. And I'll admit it, I went down the steps very quickly. Mary Elizabeth was the daughter of Andrew Jackson Caldwell and his first wife, uh, Elizabeth. Uh, she was seven years old. Her and her cousin were playing in the fireplace in the basement. Uh, and as children do, apparently she got too close to the fire and either an ember popped out onto her dress or uh, she got her, her dress into the fire and it ignited it. Uh, it was fatal to her. She uh, passed away. We don't know whether it was immediate or whether she lingered a few days. My best guess would be that she lingered for a few days. Uh, and because of that, we, uh, we see her. I've actually seen her twice in the basement. Uh, the first time I saw her, she appeared to be solid. And I thought it was actually some small child that had come in with a tour and, and walked into the basement. And I uh, said, can I help you? And she started to turn. And her, I could see then that uh, it wasn't quite solid. It started to fade away and just dissipated right in front of my eyes. Uh, the second time I saw her, I knew immediately that, that she was not a human solid. Uh, she was very translucent and she was walking away from me. One of our investigators was here uh, late at night and had one of probably the most traumatic experiences of his career. He had been downstairs and heard the footsteps going across the floor upstairs. In fact, he told me that it was so loud that he thought someone had actually broken into the house and it was a human being walking around upstairs. So he went up the stairs and more or less confronted the dark room and said, okay, who's up here? And there was just enough ambient light coming in the front window that he could see the shape of this seven foot shadow figure. And it actually charged him and came right up against him. It even almost appeared to come into him. Uh, you'd, you'd have to know this individual. He's a very strong type of individual. He went down almost on his knees, took his breath, uh, nauseous. He thought he was actually having uh, chest pains of some kind of coronary. Uh, and then probably the first time in his career, he actually had to bolt outside to get his wits back about him. And he, he actually told me he was almost afraid to come back in the house. He's just ready to leave his equipment and not even, not even come back in. And the same situation happened a week later with another member of that same team. And this time he got a really good look at it and he had a chance to uh, compare it to the size of the door frame. And our door frames are eight foot tall. And he said there was about six inches between the top of his head and the top of the frame. And it also charged him. Uh, I think he retreated quicker than the first investigator did. So he didn't have all of the ill effects, but uh, it, it was one of the most traumatic things that has ever happened. We've also picked that same figure up in a photograph in the basement. Uh, very cold day in February, two in the morning, and the photographer uh, set up a tripod, taking 10 second shots, took five shots, and this uh, apparition, for lack of a better term, I call it the shadow man, appeared to peer out of the basement window directly at watching them sitting in the driveway taking the photograph. We've had over and over again times that my wife and I 
would come by the house after going to a movie or going out to dinner, uh, leave one of our vehicles here and come back and get it. House totally black at night, uh, start down the driveway, and many of our lights are on motion sensors uh, to help facilitate the tours. And as we drive down the driveway, every light in the house will come on. Uh, just like they're walking through the house, turning the lights on to watch us. She's also been here with me a few times and had her hair touched. And just recently, we were uh, in the house sitting uh, in, in the quiet, and she had been singing a song, kind of walking through the house. And she stopped abruptly, and immediately we could, someone was finishing the song upstairs with their humming and, and trying to follow the same tune. Uh, we've had many, many times, we do have the alarm system here. Uh, thank goodness, they're, they're trying to be a little more uh, lenient toward us. Uh, there for a few months when we first took over the property in 2001 and installed the alarm system, in the middle of the night at two o'clock in the morning, I'd get a call from the police officers that uh, the house had an alarm going off and I would have to get out of bed and come out here. And there's a door in our dining room that would be standing wide open. It had been latched for two or three days and never really opened and then suddenly it's standing wide open at two in the morning. To be honest with you, I got pretty well fed up with it and one night I said, okay, that's enough. I'm not coming out here anymore and it hasn't occurred since. So maybe I talked them out of it. I have, um, we've had very, very many phone calls from uh, the alarm company in, that in the middle of the night, and normally when the phone starts ringing in the middle of the night, you automatically think something terrible is wrong. And for us, it's just become uh, the norm, and we automatically think, well, the ghosts are moving again. 
And um, I do know that the sheriff's uh, deputies uh, have become very reluctant to come in the house before my husband does. And um, they've, they've become pretty frightened. And what's interesting is most of the time, um, the motion sensor that is uh, tripped will be in the center of the house and uh, there's no way if someone had broken in that they could just trip that one uh, sensor because they would have to have tripped others to get to that point. So there are, um, I don't know what's going on. I don't know if it's um, uh, what is causing it. Uh, I don't know why the, the uh, spirits are here, but they are definitely here and, and they're everywhere. Um, I don't know if it's the, I've heard it said that it's the shape of the house, the eight-sided shapes that help create uh, an energy field that, uh, that brings them here. I don't know if that is true, but I do know that the majority of the ghost hunters and the investigative teams that have been here, um, the majority, and I, and I would say most of them, have, have come away with evidence, either EVPs or um, actual apparitions and sightings. Uh, there have been several occasions where we have uh, left a vehicle here and uh, come back late in the evening or late at night to uh, pick it up. And as we're driving away, of course, all of the house, uh, the lights are on motion sensors for the tours. And uh, as we are driving out of the driveway, I've looked back and, and seen different lights coming on inside the house. Knowing no one is inside, there, there can only be one thing that's causing that. Uh, we were here. Um, we were here several weeks ago, uh, and I saw a shadow moving uh, across the upstairs. Uh, the group of people that I was with at the time uh, had, uh, I thought, had gone upstairs, and uh, that they were the reason for the shadow. But when I turned to see if they had gone upstairs, they were actually standing behind me in in the room behind me. So. There was no one upstairs, but as I looked, several of the others that I was with saw the same thing, and um, there was there was nothing that actually could have um, legitimately caused that.